Hi Sheila's just been awakened by the 610 to Newcastle, which has just arrived at the station. The milkman has almost finished his daily round. Just a few more bottles left to do in Church Road. At the same time, the newspaper boy has just sold his first newspaper. While a taxi takes his first passenger. The bus is waiting for passengers too. Meanwhile, at the level crossing, Mr. Edwards has just closed the gate. He lives in a cottage nearby. Joe and Jason have just crossed the level crossing. They're on their way to their mate's house, John, who lives in Church Road. Just then, a boy's out of nowhere. Oi, you two, we up to? Joe replies, Just doing a bit of train spotting, mister. Are there any specials on the line today? Mr. Edwards replies, Just the usual commuter services to South Shields. Oh, there may be a freight train later on heading up the line, about 8 o'clock. Jason says, Do you know what engine it is, mister? Mr. Edwards replies, You may be lucky, it could be a Q6, Sonny. Jason replies, Thanks, mister. Don't call me mister. Call me Mo. Joe and Jason start talking about yesterday's game. Joe, what about the game yesterday? I can't believe we won. Jason replied, Bobby's first goal was the best. My dad just jumped out of his chair and the Nuki Brown went everywhere. Hand over me. And then he turned around and says, you just had your first drink. The funny thing is, I didn't get a drink, not even a drop. Joe starts laughing. <laughs> My dad was the same. He offered me a sip of Nookie Brown after Bobby's second goal. After he only just topped it up. The bubbles went right up my nose. But instead of drinking it, I sneezed everywhere. What did your dad say after that? Oh, he just let me have another sip. But it tasted like cold tea. He said it would put hairs on my chest. What hairs on your chest? <laughs> I can't believe Jack Charlton gave away a penalty right at the end. Not to worry, says Jason. At least we won the game. Oh, when the whites go marching in. Oh, when the whites go marching in. We want to be in that number. Oh, when the whites go marching in. Joe and Jason arrives at John's house. Joe knocks on the door. Knock, knock. Mrs. Jenkins answers the door. John, there's a couple of lads out here for you. All right, Mum, just give us a minute. Typical. Always late and always last. Mrs. Jenkins. Hurry up, John, your mates are getting restless. There you are, John. Where are we off to then, lads? His mum shouts, Don't be late. Your tea's be ready at seven o'clock. 
Okay, Mom. So, John, where are we off to? I know a great place where we can spot some trains. Come on, let's go. Where is this great place, says Joe. John replies, it's the tunnels near St Hilda's Colliery. Where are we going, John? Right, well, to get there, we've just got to climb over this wall through Mrs. Ashford's garden, over the fence, through the trees, and we're there. Joe replies, Oh, I don't know about going through someone's garden. You'll be fine as long as you're quiet, says Jason. Right, Joe, you go first. You're the smallest. Okay, Jason. Okay, the coast is clear. Come on, everybody. Where's John, Jason? Well, he was right behind me. Wait for me, guys. Just then a voice comes from the bungalow. Who's in my garden? I'll call the police. Hurry up, John. Boy, that was close. Nah, yeah, she would never have caught us. Oh, you're right about the view. This is F.A.B. Hey John, this is the best. Joey, keep your voice down. Somebody in the plate layers hot. There goes the DMU on its return journey. God, and it's all quiet now. Hey guys, what's happened to the traffic? There's nothing moving. 
It's deadly silence. There's no birds in the trees either. This is creepy. It's like everything's frozen in time. And it feels cold as well. And we're in the middle of summer. Something strange going on here. Do you feel that? The ground's moving. It's shaking. What's that noise? There's a rumble in the tunnel. Now it's your stomach, John. Wow, look at that. Look at the speed it's going. It's like Thunderbird 1. Did anybody get its number? Well, did anybody get its number? No, it was going too fast, says John. It was in post-war black livery, wasn't it? Yes, I thought all the locos post-war were painted in BR green. There's something spooky about this. My Uncle Sid knows a lot about engines. He might know something. Who's Uncle Sid? John replies. He's the station master at Tyne Dock. What do you think, Jason? Sounds like a good idea, you know. You can see a lot more from a platform than you can from up here. Just one thing before we go. Uncle Sid has a big dog. And he's got really, really big teeth. Uh, we're not afraid of any dogs. Come on, let's go. Oh, you lot, get out from up there. I'll get the police onto you. FAB, time to go. After retracing their footsteps, dashing through Mrs. Ashford's garden, they head for the station to buy a return ticket to Tyne Dock to find out more about this ghost train. Hey Jason, says Joey. We did see what we saw, didn't we? It's not a ghost train, is it? Why, are you scared of ghosts? No, I'm not scared of ghosts. Ah, Joey's scared of ghosts. As they're waiting for the train, they carry on talking about what they have seen. Whether it was real or not.
So, Joey, what's your uncle like? We'll find out in a minute. Hey guys, there's an engine coming. I think it's an INF. Told ya, look at how that sound anywhere. About good timing, just got off a train and saw 9F. Super! So, where's your uncle? Oh, there he is, over there in platform 2. Jason was having second thoughts. Is that the dog? I'm scared of dogs! Joe replies. You'll be fine, just keep your hands in your pockets. Come on guys, let's go, let's go meet him. We need to find out about this locomotive. What are you doing here, Joe? And who's your pals? This is Jason and John. We've come here to ask you about a locomotive we have spotted, but we didn't get its number, Sid replied. Oh yes, well tell us more. Meanwhile, Jason and John were keeping their distance. Nice doggy! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Nice doggy! I think the loco's in its wartime black livery, and it was pulling teak coaches. Sid replied, Don't worry about the dog, he's just been fed. Meanwhile, Joe had a little chuckle to himself. Now then, about this loco, I did hear of a loco running in wartime black, but I thought it had been repainted. Let me phone a friend. Wait here for a minute. Look after Ben for me, won't you? Sure will, Sid. Hey Joe, wasn't that the loco the gatekeeper was on about? Yeah, you're right Jason. Well, at least we know where that's going. Right lads, I've spoken to the manager at the sheds at Newhustle and he says the loco comes through Newhustle but it never stops. It's an express all the way through to Edinburgh. Joey replied. What loco is it, Uncle? Sid replied. Give us a chance, lad. Like I said, it's a non-stopper all the way through to Edinburgh. I arranged for you to visit my old friend, Mr. Liverton, at the sheds. Joe replies. Does that include my friends, John and Jason? Of course it does, lad. All you have to do is make your own way there to New Hassle Sheds. Must go now. Got a station to run. Come on, Ben. we got work to do. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Don't call me Mr. Jackson. Call me Sid. Oh, and by the way, there's a Mr. Nation that's going to meet you at the gates, at the MPD. We've not got much money in our, said Jason. Let's all chip in, said John. That's a great idea, said Joe. We should have enough money to get to Newcastle, Newcastle and back. 
Ben was a softy after all, said Jason. Come on, let's all go. If we're quick enough, we should be able to catch the next train. I do like your uncle, says John. I think he's great, says Jason. I do have an uncle that comes round, but only when my dad's out. Funny that. Sun Chariot. Wow, do you get that number? Yes, I did, John. Hey mister, can I have your autograph? Come on you two, I'm starving, says John. John's always thinking about his stomach. Yeah, that's true. With the way John's stomach was rumbling, they all decided to pop into the refreshments room for something to eat. Just then, Joe pipes up. I know a great place where we can spot some engines. It's on the way. It's on a bridge in fact. Because they're all getting very excited about the visit to the engine sheds. There's the engine shed. We're not too far away now. Ah, oh, what a view. Got that number. It's the Minaru. Wow. 
Oh, look at that experimental glue. Oh, this is fantastic. Come on, I can't wait to see what's in the sheds. Are you Mr. Nation? Yes, I'm Mr. Nation. Mr. Liverton did say there was three lads coming to the sheds. But uh, call me Ross. Right, follow me. Keep up lads, it could get really busy around here. Wow, is that the Flying Scotsman? Yes, she's just heading off for our first trip of the day. Come on, lads, we don't want to keep Mr. Liverton waiting. Perfect timing, lads. Just got a local coming in. Here's the three lads you said I had to keep an eye out for, Mr. Livington. Thank you, Mr. Nation. So, which one of you is Joe? I'm Joe. Ah, right, so you must be John and Jason. Yeah, that's right. So, you want to find out about this mysterious loco? All I can tell you is, it's a special loco. We've been trying to paint her since 1946. She whistles through here, twice a day, but nobody sees her. It's like, she's never there. Do you know if it has a running number, Mr. Livington? Jason says. Don't you know, lads, if I give you the running number and the nameplate, It'd be like cheating. You've got to see it for yourselves. It has a name? John replies. Why aye, says Mr. Livington. F.A.B. far out, says Joe. I'll tell you what I'll do, lads. I'll get my chief mechanical engineer, Mr. Pullen, to show you around the arts because he knows more about the locomotives than I do <whistles> Ah, perfect timing Mr Pullin I'd like you to show these lads around the yards. Right away Mr Liverton Is that you, Joe? Yes, I haven't seen you since you were a little lad. Say hello to your Uncle Sid for me. Right, lads, where do you want to start first? The lads were in their element, as Mr Pullen was giving them all the details about the A4 that they're standing in front of. I love these A4s, says Joe. Did you know there were 35 of these locomotives built between 1935 and 1938? They mainly spent their working lives hauling expresses from King's Cross to Edinburgh via York and Newcastle. John gives Joe a nudge. 
Ask him about the locomotive was seen earlier. What locomotive is that then, Joe? Um, um, it's the one we saw earlier. It was going so fast, all we saw was just a black streak. We don't know what it is. We think it's an A3. Mr. Liverton says it's, it's a non-stop express from King's Cross to Edinburgh, and it doesn't stop at all. And it's in wartime black. Yeah, lad, all I can say is, all the locomotives post-war should be all repainted by now. So I don't think it'd be in wartime black. I remember the old boy used to talk about a locomotive um, that never showed up here. Back in 19, 1946, I think it was. Uh, it was coming to have a new paint job. Yes, it was. That's it. Uh, July 1946. That was it. And uh, it never made it. It was involved with an accident. And both the driver and the fireman were killed. Uh, what was the name of that locomotive? Ah, that was it. It was the Nighthawk. Running number 2577. So, it mustn't have been that one. You couldn't have saw them that one. Yes, but we did see... A wartime black locomotive racing, really going so fast. I don't know how it made it round the curves. Nah, you must have been seeing things, Joe. Yes, we did, mister. We did. Mr. Pullman spent the whole afternoon showing the lads around the sheds. Each and every locomotive, how different they were. And then Joe pipes up. Hey, look, it's a sun chariot. Yeah, we've got that number already, says John and Jason. Oh, look, we have a locomotive coming on shed. You sure it wasn't this one, lads? No, it's not that one. Are you sure it wasn't that locomotive? Yes, we're sure, mister. The one we saw definitely had a bigger tender. Okay lads, I've got to go. I've got some work to do on that locomotive. I'll come and collect you in about half an hour or so. And in the meantime, keep off the tracks. We don't want you getting injured. Okay, mister. As the afternoon wore on, the lads seem to have forgotten all about the locomotive they saw this morning. As they keep seeing locomotive after locomotive. Train spotters heading.
This has been the greatest day ever, says Jason. All well, thanks to your uncle, says John. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't actually see that loco. We spotted coming out the tunnel and got its number for real. What was it again? Ah, it was 2577. The Nighthawk, says John. No sooner than John had mentioned the Nighthawk, a deadly silence fell about the depot. Everything went quiet. Not a sound anywhere. Very, very creepy indeed. Nothing was moving. Nothing at all. Even the lads didn't realise what was going on until Joe said I thought this was a very very busy junction there hasn't been any traffic along here for a couple of minutes now what's going on? and John replies there's not a sound either this is creepy Jason says no mate this is weird I hear something coming. Sounds familiar. Look! Can't be! It's the Nighthawk! It, 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 it can't be. Where have we just seen it? Oh, oh, it's gone now. It's behind you. We'll see it again. I, 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 I hope not, says Jason. Here it comes. It's creeping into the yard. That's it, I'm out of here, says Jason. Looks like it's just me and you, John. It, it's, it's, it's not real, it's not real. Right, let's see if there's any crew. Hello? Hello, mister? Hello? There's nobody in there. I'm going to go and see Mr. Livington. You're not leaving me on my own. I'm coming with you. Joe and John found Jason hiding behind the water tower. I've knocked on the door. I've knocked on the door. There's nobody in. Really? I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I want to go home. 
Okay, but we've got to walk through the yards to get out. Okay. But I want to go home, says Jason. As they started to run through the depot, they noticed the engine had gone. Was it ever here? Was it for real? Everything's back to normal. The trains are running again. At the station, the lads agreed not to tell anybody what they have seen because they're not sure themselves if they have seen it. Silly woman, says Jason. Yeah, it's Mrs. Sims, says Joe. Yes, this is it. What are we going to do tomorrow? Well, Batman's on at the pictures. We could go and see that. Okay, yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. Oh, look, John, there's your mum. She's just come out to the uh, chip shop. Looks like your tea's ready. Okay, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Hey, Jason. It's been a fabulous day. Yeah, you're right there, Joe. Meeting up with John, running through gardens, getting chased off the top of the tunnels. Meeting up with your uncle, getting a tour around the engine sets, seeing a ghost train to top it off. Fabulous day. <laughs>